last week. Where, where did things go wrong when you were able to maybe pick it in and watch it with the benefit of hindsight? Well, I think when it comes down to it, you know, it's kind of a broken record, but in order to be great on third down, you got to be good on first and second. Unfortunately, we had some negative plays, had some uh, penalties as well, which caused us to be in third and long situations, and, and those are tough to convert. Marcus, uh, Arthur was talking a little bit on Monday about the fine line between extending a play and pressing to force a play to happen. What's kind of an example of that that, that you've seen maybe over the course of the last few games? Well, I think specifically there was a couple plays, um, whether well, it was the interception um, in the last game on Thursday night, um, you know, also a couple third downs where, you know, taking a sack. Um, you know, we talk about it all the time, in order for this offense to continue to hum and to be in rhythm, I, I got to be efficient. Um, and sometimes being efficient means throwing the ball away. It means um, scrambling, getting a few yards, getting down. And um, I can do a better job of that. And, you know, I can help this offense kind of get in a rhythm, get going, and continue to move the chains. To, to follow up on Tori's question, though, you are so creative and have the ability to extend plays, but you've talked about you know the decision making on some of those. How do you separate those two things? Can you get one without the other? I guess. Yeah, absolutely. And I think when it comes down to it, you know, if my initial reaction is to scramble and, and throw it, you know, I think more times than not, those have been good decisions. I think when I start to extend it and I start getting pushed out to the sideline, um, you know, sometimes those plays become negative and bad decisions. So, um, just being smart, you know, once the play is done and over. Really, like just either dirting it or um, you know trying to get a few yards if I can. So how do you kind of reinforce that with yourself? Is it through <laughs> film study or through practice, or is it just having that mentality out there on the field? Like, how do you do that? Well, I'm a, I'm a practice guy. Um, you know, I'm a work at it. Those are things that I've always kind of prided myself on is just continuing to work. So, um, you know, those are things that I, I'll do out on the practice field, and you know, as as time progresses, that those things will carry out on the field. When there's negativity outside this building around you, how do you? approach that? How do you handle that? How do you avoid that? Right. Well, I mean, yeah, I, I think at the end of the day, I, I just control what I can control. Um, I try to be the best, the best version of myself here for these guys and try to win games. Um, what other people think or those opinions, I have no control over. I have no say in that. So um, the more that I can just focus on doing my job and being the best I can be for these guys, um, everything else will take care of itself. Well, I mean, when it's Large, a lot of attention on social media that, that people are you know, saying start Desmond move. Like, do you, you then, like, I mean, do you have to talk to your family in some ways? Do you have those conversations? Because they're probably seeing the brunt of it on social media that you're necess not necessarily seeing. Right, yeah. Um, you know, I, I think that's kind of the nature of the beast, right? Uh, especially at the position. Um, unfortunately, you know, family members, friends, you know, they do say those things. Um, but at the same time, it is what it is. And, um, you know, the people that support me, that love me, that, um, you know, have always been by my side, you know, they take it for a grain of salt and move on. And that's what you have to do. Um, you know, people are entitled to their opinions. People can say what they want and believe what they want. Um, at the end of the day, nothing that I can do is going to make those guys think differently. I just got to go out there and play better. Would you say, though, at this point in your career, maybe that you were more equipped to maybe dealing with that negative noise versus maybe a rookie season oh, or no things doubt. like that, like that you've No doubt, no doubt. Um, you know, obviously the situation I had in Tennessee, um, you know, I didn't, as much as I am as a, as a people pleaser, you know, that did hurt when I was going through the, the situation that I did in Tennessee. At the same time, you know, I understand that it is the, na the nature of the business and it's a merit-based business and you got to perform. And um, going through the situation that I did in Tennessee, I think has ultimately prepared me for things like this. Um, and understanding that, you know, at the end of the day, I just got to do what I can to be the best version of myself for these guys. Was there something that you did to kind of focus on you, whether, I don't know, talk to a therapist or a sports psychologist because the outside noise and being a people pleaser itself, you know, I know too, can be tough. So yeah, no doubt. what did you do to kind of... Um, I went down that path for sure. Um, some people it works, some some it doesn't. Um, you know, I did feel like it helped me for some what, what I needed at that point in time in my life. Um, but for the most part, at the end of the day, People that love me, that support me, that's all that cares. That's all that I really matter and or think about. And when it comes down to it, I love the game. I love being out here with these guys. Um, and I'll do whatever I can to help them win. Marcus, you've talked about in the past that you've been maybe a little too robotic. Did you feel like Sunday you maybe got into your head a little bit? Um, I don't know. That's hard to say. Um, you know, obviously, I, I really pride myself on being creative, creating plays. Um, you know, I think conversations that Art and I have had, 
Um, I've always felt like when there's a lull on offense and we're not playing very well or we're not converting and you know there's not many points, I've always been the guy that like I'm gonna go make a play, and I think sometimes that that gets me in trouble. Um, so just learning from those experiences, understanding that at the same time I can just allow the game to come to me, just take what they give me, be efficient, and um, this offense can can roll. Does Arthur kind of um, encourage you to be that guy to to go make a play, especially when offense? Um, he, he encouraged me to be efficient. Um, you know, I, I think it's just being smart situationally, you know, taking care of the football, making plays when they're there and when they're not, you know, just getting us out of bad stuff. What do you see in the, uh, the Bears' defense since they uh, changed a couple people up over there? Yeah, I mean, it, it is young. Um, a former team and I, Nick Morrow, is playing linebacker there. He's been playing great, I think, um, from the tape that I've watched. You know, obviously Eddie Jackson's been performing well. He's been a guy that's been doing that for a long time. Um, cornerback Jalen Johnson has, has also played well. So, um, week in and week out, you got to play your best football, and there's, this is no different. And can you y'all have room to lean more on the rushing attack here? Because you know, it gets cold. You're not outside. Or anything, <laughs> it helps that we play in a dome. <laughs> um, yeah, we'll have to see. You know, they they say that you know a run game travels right, and um, as it gets later on in the year. Uh, it is helpful, but at the same time, we still got to make plays in the pass game. Going back to kind of the social media portion, the psychological portion, like, do you have to actually talk to your family or, or your friends because they end up you know, running your account to you to just say, "Don't tell me about this stuff." Or, <laughs> like, I, I'm just trying to understand how you approach it. Yeah, I mean, honestly, like I said, um, because I've experienced it before, I don't. I take a lot of that stuff as noise, and I don't even really think about it. Um, so. Conversations I have with my family is more just like, hey, it is what it is, and um, you know, we'll move forward. Did you have to kind of train them in some ways for that? I mean, yeah, a little bit. It's hard, right? Yeah. Like, um, you know, for my parents, it's like, you know, it's their son, you know, and they they feel like they got to be defensive and all those types of things. And at the same time, you know, people are going to have their opinions, and it is what it is. And I think we've grown to learn that. At the same time, you know, you're always going to have people that support you. You're always going to have people that are going to be negative. Um, you can't really control those things and move on and do what you can to, to be the best version of yourself. Anything else? Yeah, um, the cornerback uh, um, Sanborn, how's he playing uh, to, to connect, taking over for, I guess, Ray Quan? Yeah, uh, again, he's, he's come in and he's played well. I, I think, you know, they, they're scheme wise, they do a lot of different things with movements. Um, you know, they create. Uh, problems for for up uh, for guys up front, and um, he's created a lot of tackles just because of how they they scheme things up.